Well, the president's winning agenda gaining even more steam ahead of 2020 uh, because Democrats have no economic platform. Issue after issue, the Democrat Party has never been further outside the American mainstream. High taxes, high crime, open borders. We're now the number one economy anywhere in the world, and it's not even close. So, can anyone beat President Trump if the economy stays this strong? Here to debate, senior policy analyst from the Independent Women's Forum, Patrice Onwuka, and Virginia House Delegate Mark Levine. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Well, good Thanks morning, Heather. Us. So let's take a look at these numbers. Let's break down these booming economic numbers. 3.2% growth in the first quarter. 196,000 jobs added in March unemployment, a rate near a 50-year low. So, Mark, what about that? I mean, that's good news. Well, it depends on people's paychecks, right? I mean, the question is, are your health care costs going up? Are your, is your tax refund higher or lower? What about Medicare and Social Security? Do you agree with the president's plan to cut your Social Security and Medicare? Or do you agree with the Democrats who want to lower health care costs? So the question is, what is the bottom line for the ordinary American? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're a farmer and the, the president's imposed tariffs, is it easier for you to sell your goods now that the president is against free trade, which Republicans used to believe in? I think times are tough for a lot of Americans. Are those manufacturing jobs coming back. How about those coal jobs that the president promised? Are those coming back? What is the bottom line for Americans? And I think they'll see that they don't want the massive debt. Remember, Republicans used to care mm -hmm. about debt, the Tea Party? And now, now they've doubled the Obama deficits. I understand that gives some Saudi billionaire a tax cut. But how about your tax okay, refund? So Was it Patrice, higher or lower? Patrice, perhaps that's an indication of some of the uh, points that Democrats are going to try to take in this uh, time where we have this economy that is booming. They are. But you know what? This is Trump's economy, and it's a great economy. You talk about how regular families are doing. Look at the tax cuts. When every person, pretty much every taxpayer's paycheck got a, a cut last year, uh, and, and that's continuing. You know, when you talk about refunds, well, there's a reason why a, a smaller refund may not be a bad idea, because that means that you get to keep more of your money all year long to be able to, to, uh, to pay for your health care costs, your Medicare, your Medicaid, or your, um, your health, your prescriptions. You know, so when we look at small business options, Optimism being at record highs. That means that your, their small businesses are able to hire and expand. When you look at people, uh, you know, co consumer confidence, they're able to go out and buy a car. Why? Because you have historically low unemployment rate. Uh, so, you know, for women, for minorities. So people are able to leave their jobs and find a new one. And by the way, wages are actually rising. So when, when, when we talk about how mm -hmm. regular people are doing, I think they're actually doing really well. And Mark, when you talk about taxes, you know, we have Bernie Sanders, we have Elizabeth Warren out there talking about about raising taxes as part of their platform. No, they're talking about lowering taxes for middle class people. It's true if really? you're a Saudi billionaire, if you own a multinational corporation, yeah, your taxes might go up a bit. But they want to, for example, you know, give more Medicare, more Social Security, cut some of those well, taxes the, the, that ordinary people pay and use it maybe so you don't spend so much time in traffic. Use it but on But you roads. know what the challenge? I think the challenge is when Bernie Sanders talks about, and even Elizabeth Warren talk about education and, and uh, student loan debt, cutting yeah, student loan costs. debt or, or, or actually getting rid of it entirely. You know, the reason why it's going to it's going to happen is because taxpayers are going to have to foot that bill, not just the wealthy. It's going to be all Americans. And I think Bernie I Sanders know. has admitted, has admitted that everybody is going to have to pay more, pay more for Medicare costs, pay I more for medical costs. costs. And so, you know, I but you know, what? Want, I, I think they are, too. Costs. And the problem right. is it's because government has been involved in the in the higher education process. OK, we have about 30 seconds left. Mark, final word. And then uh, Patrice, I'll let you respond quickly. I, I think I think people realize and college costs are through the roof, health care costs are through the roof. People are spending more time in traffic because the president promised to give us infrastructure and didn't. He's now cutting Social Security and Medicare where he promised not to. He's broken his word to the American people. Patrice? Well and when you look at what, why health care costs are so high and why higher education is so high, it's because of government. The president has wanted to get government out of our lives, out of these big industries, so that the private sector can deliver better options, more choice, and at lower cost. And mm -hmm. I think Americans appreciate that. All right. Thank you both for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Have Thank a good you. day.